Okay, let's look at this ester hydrolysis mechanism. Now, as with all um, of the acid catalyzed processes, this is going to be a longer mechanism. So, our general reaction is for any ester, I'm not going to pick an any ester, I'm going to do something more specific. But this is what we should see at the end. We should see an acid and an alcohol. Great. Okay, so let's take a specific ester. No surprise, I'm going to put methyl groups on everything that keeps all the R groups nice and small and easy to write. We'll treat this with sulfuric acid and water. When we mix sulfuric acid and water, I don't know if you've ever done that, but it gets super hot. It gets super hot because there's an acid-base reaction going on and you form H3O+. We will use H3O plus as our proton source for every step. We will use water as our base because it's the strongest base we have in this medium. So we start by protonating the carbonyl. And that gives us a protonated carbonyl. That's a nice, strong electrophile now. And our water, although it's just a weak nucleophile can attack that carbonyl. That gets us to here. Note that all these steps are equilibria. So we, we got to keep equilibrium arrows going here. Now what happens here is in, in the end, oops, <laughs> I forgot something important. We're trying to get rid of this group. And to get rid of that group under acidic conditions, we want to protonate that group. But we can't protonate it if some other part of the molecule is protonated. So let's fix that problem. Let's deprotonate this oxygen. Now we are free and clear to protonate the OR group of the ester, this O-methyl. And let's wrap around to the bottom left And now this is just a big leaving group. And so it's going to leave. And as it turns out, I like to think it doesn't just leave. When you have a neighboring oxygen, it actually gets pushed out. It gets helped out the door by that neighboring oxygen. And if we look at what we have, that gets us to here. I'm going to put that CH3 group on there now. And now we have one last step to finish the reaction. We just need to protonate, deprotonate our reformed carbonyl. And that will give us our carboxylic acid, our alcohol side product, and it also reforms our acid catalyst. Great. So this is the reaction. If this reaction runs forward, we call it a hydrolysis because we are lysine. We are cutting at the very top of the screen. We are doing a lysis cutting of our ester using water. It's a hydrolysis. If it runs backwards, if, if we remove um, water in the reaction, we'll run it backwards and we'll form an ester from our acid. So we call this, this is our Fischer, Fischer esterification. So we do the fissure if we run it backwards. Hydrolysis if we go forward. Now I've drawn this on a specific ester. You know, it works on a lot of different esters. This ester could look like this, and that would form under hydrolysis. As always, you form an acid. There's our acid plus an alcohol. Uh, we can do weirder esters, you know, things that look like this. Uh, that's not all that weird, but, you know, something to look like that. And again, we would just simply break this ester group. So even though I'm a fan of methyl groups in these slides, don't think that the world runs on methyl groups. So you have a lot of different flexibility in these reactions. So that's the ester hydrolysis mechanism.